Chapter 8, Dinner Time Stories That night I made myself some dinner. As I settled down and chewed on my meal, I heard a noise. It was an earthworm crawling on the rafters. I thought I told you too that you had to stay outside. I said, we are staying outside, said the platypus. I thought we were doing a pretty good job, said the jack a lope. You weren't doing anything, I said. After I did my dishes, I jumped into my bathtub, picked up my phone, and called Kathy and Polly. There are these crazy creatures at my house. I whispered. What kind of creatures? Asked Polly. There's a platypus and a jackalope. I responded. Haley, said Kathy, there is no such thing as a jackalope. They're just a myth, please, I said. You need to give me advice on getting rid of them without hurting their feelings. They told me to do what I had to do, and then, they hung up. After I got out of the tub, I went outside to see them. If you're gonna stay here, you gotta keep better track of your stuff. I said to them, I thought they'd like, a bedtime story or something. I brought them some really cool ones. Where did you get those? Asked the platypus. My brother, Dominic's side of our bedroom. I replied, he had them in one of his cabinets, and when I was a little girl, he caught me peeking in all the time. So, he gave them to me. I showed them, Squirrel Joe's Critter Corner, and Joyful Nautical Pals which are both very funny. Defenders of the Universe. Which is very cool. Then, another one hit me. I showed them one of his favorite comic books. On the cover was a superhero wearing a black and gray costume and a cape and mask with two long ears on it. This guy is Batman. I said, sure, he's famous now, but he started off just like you two probably did. He did? Asked the Jack A. Lope. Yes, I answered, watched his parents get killed by a robber. Traveled the world for almost an entire decade. But now, he and his sidekick, Robin only protect all things good, never evil. I betcha never thought about it. The platypus pulled up another one. What about that one? He asked. I looked at the comic he was talking about. It had a gigantic and terrifying monster on it. This was a comic book for adolescents. That's Hojoni, the king of all destroyers. I replied, he's not the hero, he's the villain. He's nothing like you too. You're good guys. Like Batman. Later that night, I had a few questions to ask the two of them. What are you two doing here, anyway? I asked. We have come for dinner, and for you, Ms. Jameson, said the platypus. How do you know my last name? I asked. We read your birth file, Haley, said the jackalope as he chuckled at my middle name, sorry. Or should I say, Terence, I know. I said, funny middle name for a girl, huh? Yeah, said the jackalope, by the way, haven't you ever wanted to see the world? Yes, I said, the only traveling I do these days is when my family and I fly to New York City for our annual Christmas, New Year's celebration with my Uncle Bruce, Aunt Tori, Uncle Jerry, Aunt Nicole and Aunt Roxanne, Roxy, and their kids, who are my cousins. There's Uncle Bruce and Aunt Tori's kids, Taylor, Corey, and Gabby. And my Uncle Jerry's twin daughters, Adelaide and Katrina. We've been doing this since I could crawl. We normally leave on the last day of school before December holiday vacation. They're great. I love them to pieces. Except my Aunt Roxy, she's weird. Other than my yearly December holiday trips, I've only left my hometown very few times. Do you want to join us on a long hike, tomorrow? Asked the platypus. I can't, I said. I've got school in the morning. Have you ever wanted to play hooky? Asked the jackalope. I froze for a moment. No, I said, but I do, now. Then it's settled, said the platypus. We head out tomorrow. What about the school staff? I asked. We'll just play a trick on them. Said the jackalope, everything will be under control.